I have so much respect for Nancy Rotering and the people of Highland Park in general. Of uh, Just a, an example of how you can walk forward from tragedy and travesty and put things together and continue to go on in your life. Because nobody has to be in this club that Highland Park is in with a mass shooting. Um, and, uh, Mayor, it's a pleasure to have you back on. And I hope you understand how much I respect you because I think you've done an amazing job. Thank you so much, Steve. Good morning. And Andrea's here as well. Good morning, Mayor. And, and, and Nick, Hi, Andrea. John. All right, so uh, how do you balance getting back to, I mean, we're two years down the road here. How do you balance getting back to life, having a fun holiday celebration, and still respecting what happened? Because that's a tightrope, I would guess. It is indeed. And so it's with respect and compassion and support for one another uh, that we continue on this journey it's important for us to pause, as we will, uh, in the morning on July 4th and remember the lives lost and remember those whose lives were forever changed on July 4th, 2022. But in talking to people over the last year and a half, even folks who've moved away, so many have said, oh, those 4th of July memories are really my, some of my strongest fond memories of Highland Park. And mm-hmm. for so many of the children we know that thousands of children were there on that day who were pretty traumatized. We want to bring back that joy and those good memories and help our families continue to move forward. Mayor, I commend you and everybody in Highland Park for what you're doing. I know you're planning kind of a scaled down 4th of July celebration today, this year. Uh, but also, as you said, remembering. And those are some of the images that I most remember, too, in the days after. You know, the photographs were emerging of the police running to the scene, you know, as people were running away and people saying in their stores, come in here, you know, so that I think is what the legacy will be, the community coming together and everybody remembering how th- just the help that uh, that you had uh, administered on that day. Well, thanks for mentioning that. And it's interesting when I talk to people for the first time, people who may not live here, they will all tell me their stories. That's the first thing they'll tell me is where they were and what their story is. And the strangers who were thrown together in the face of that horrific event, who are now essentially family to one another, they are continuing their lives together. And it says something wonderful about the resilience of our community. Um, But it's frankly a tragedy that none of us should have to experience. So we'll focus on our nation's independence, celebrating together and hopefully uh, being able to continue to move our journey forward. You know, one of the things that I always sermonize about here is just talking about therapy and and getting counseling, and it's a a health club for your head and your heart, and everybody ought to do it. Mm -hmm. In the case of something like what you guys have gone through, um, how are you handling your own trauma and your staff's trauma, um, and how have you been able to get back to, in quotes, normal? Oh, thanks for asking that. So... It is vitally important for people to continue to receive the support that they need. We are just starting the planning of the place of remembrance, the permanent place of remembrance. And we have social workers in those meetings. We had a very um, poignant and moving meeting a few weeks ago, and literally people just introducing themselves was such an emotional thing. I was really glad that we had mental health professionals available All of us need to recognize we're human, and all of us need to recognize that this is an unbelievable burden that nobody should have to carry alone. So it's been important to have great uh, resources in the community. That's one of the things, frankly, that I've been talking to the White House about and the state about is, you know, so many of our communities in Illinois and throughout this country don't have those resources. And this trauma then continues to build that cycle. So that's one of the most important things is not only for Highland Park to recognize that we need to continue to support each other and and make sure people have access to mental health resources, but also to make sure that other communities that may not have those resources get the funding, get the people, and get the access. Again, this is something, this violence is inhumane. And so people need to recognize that they should be able to and should demand of their government, if this isn't going away, we need to be able to have the resources to cope. Mayor, what are the residents telling you? Are they saying it's time to get back to some semblance of normalcy, but still staying together to support one another? And that's probably why you're taking these steps to have a scaled-down version of the parade this year 
for the celebration. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and it's interesting. I, mean, I was at the grocery store yesterday and everybody stopped me and said, this feels right. And I think that's important is listening to our hearts, knowing that what we're doing is hopefully going to meet the needs of most people. And frankly, it is kind of in stages because there are some who are only, you know, remembering their loss and they are not in the mood to celebrate. They don't ever want to think about this holiday again, but we want them to know that we're here to continue our support of them. There are others who are moving forward. Maybe they weren't directly affected, but they were somewhat traumatized and they want that feeling of community. The fourth fest that the park district is putting on after the parade will provide people with that opportunity, come together, have food, great music, fun games, a family friendly event. And then for those who really love that sense of parade that makes it the 4th of July, we're giving them that experience. The evening events, frankly, are being moved to another time, and that's really out of respect for our first responders. Um, the, the events that we had on, on the remembrance, the first year of remembrance, started at 3 o'clock in the morning for our team and ended at 11 o'clock at night when we had the Gary Sinise and Lieutenant Dan Band celebration and the drone show. And so that's too long of a day for anybody. So that's why we're moving the evening events to another time later in the summer. And I think it's really important that you mention what you did, and that is if you can't celebrate, if, you, if it's not in your heart or your head or you can't deal with it, that's just as okay as if you want to get back to, again, in quotes, normal. There's no wrong feeling about any of this. Absolutely. And last year we had the opportunity for people to watch if they chose via Zoom. And so that walk that you saw us take to reclaim our parade route down Central Avenue had 5,000 people present, but had another 5,000 people watching. And so for each person, it's an individual journey. People came to the 4th of July in 2022 with their own emotional journeys and left with their own experiences. And so it's important for everyone to recognize, that, to your point, there is no one way, there is no right way. It's whatever feels comfortable and safe for the people who are with us watching either virtually or in person on July 4th, 2024. Mayor, real quick, an, an update on um, uh, plans for the permanent memorial. I know that um, uh, the Grays, John Gray, grew up in Highland Park, still his family. They've donated uh, earlier this year a million dollars, I guess, to, to help. Any kind of update you can give us? Absolutely. So we have a steering committee and we're having public meetings um, pretty much monthly. We're calling it a place of remembrance and not a permanent memorial because memorial reflects only the loss of life in our minds and a place of remembrance recognizes the 48 people who are now working to move forward in their journey after having been shot and thankfully surviving, as well as those who are traumatized. So we are moving forward with a permanent place of remembrance and um, are currently in the process of figuring out a good location. Uh, we're so appreciative to John and Mindy Gray. And when I talked to John, he said to me, some of my fondest memories are the 4th of July in Highland Park. So what a special gift they've given to our community. We are, um, again, continuing to hold monthly meetings and the public engagement portion is about to begin. All of that's available on the city's website, cityhpil.com backslash remembrance. And we welcome the public's input. Um, having spoken with folks from Newtown, Connecticut, and San Bernardino, California, um, and so many other places that have also had to endure these horrific events, we know that this can be a very fraught process and can take a long time. Frankly, I don't want us to have it take such a long time because I think it's the end result that matters. We need to give people a place for remembrance and reflection and respite. Um, so we're in the process of figuring out the right location, and at some point we will have a national request for proposals from people uh, who we know will, will provide us with that special and important place that, frankly, will last forever. It's a great idea. Uh, Mayor, you are always welcome here, and as we lead up to the 4th or any other time, I hope you'll ask uh, to come back because we'll certainly be asking you, but thanks for the great leadership. So appreciate you both. Thank you for the opportunity to chat this morning. Thank right, you, well. Mayor. It's Mayor Nancy uh, Rotary. Oh, I mean, she suffered the same trauma as everybody in her town did. And she there. had to lead. Yeah. yeah, she was there. Yeah.